welcome back to Wrench Life and welcome back to the Super Bastard build. Now when we first envisaged this thing about a year or so ago and we started gathering all the bits together, um, one of the first pieces on the list was this engine. So this is the 16 horsepower V-twin that we're going to tamper with and then put in. It's going to be the heart of the tractor. Um, since then we've actually done a lot of work to this but the proof of the pudding for an engine is uh, more of this kind of the starting up rather than what you can see here. So I really want to see this thing going, shooting flames out and you know, doing engine -y things as well. And really what that means is we need to get the base of the chassis all put together so we can mount this in place and get all these other extra bits attached. So, uh, yeah, we're going to leave that chassis jig. All right, so over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been using that there chassis jig we built in episode one to kind of cut and test fit all these pieces, all the bits that make up the chassis. So it was a long enough drawn out process, so we're going to go montage style here to kind of show you what the hell went on. So to start off, we had that big pile of parts all kind of laid out, and we laid them out there just to show you how many bits there is in this midsection alone. Right, first off we got bulkhead number two. Um, this is kind of the most complex of the three. And uh, you've already seen this one before in episode one. Also you'll see here that we added bulkhead number one, which is a tiny little bulkhead, um, but we needed to add it at this stage when we could still use the tool with the bulkhead in upside down. Last but not least, we got bulkhead number three. Now this is the, the kind of the anchor point for the triangulated four bar link that we're going to use to suspend that rear axle. So it is quite a bulky unit and there is a lot more still to add to it. So really for each bulkhead, the way we did it was we assembled the thing in the tool, spot welded it, removed it from the tool so we could uh, lay down the full welds the whole way around, dress the thing, and then we moved on to the next stage. But uh, first, we need some more welding gas. So at this stage we've got the two assemblies back in the jig but we want to check before we put any chassis reels in we want to check that everything is straight and true and all the dimensions kind of tally up with what it is we expect. Now one of the unfortunate byproducts of welding is the distortion that happens when the weld cools so you've got to kind of factor that in and be really careful the way you weld. So really at this stage we were checking and double checking that everything was straight before we put them uh, chassis reels in. Now if you find yourself in a situation where uh, your welds have pulled something out of shape or the chassis looks a bit bent or twisted up, really there is a tool for that occasion. It is of course a, a hammer. I have many of them and I'm not afraid to use them either. Holy dear good fuck. Now there can come a time when a hammer just isn't enough and it's time to bring in the stump man as well so we're not afraid of that either. Really we couldn't be uh, afraid to take any means necessary to straighten this thing out because the next step was to weld in these triangulations and uh, once these are in the thing is going nowhere so if it's wonky and you weld them in it's going to be wonky forever. Luckily though we got it straight. So there you have it, it took a couple of weeks but we have the start of the chassis now. So this is the, the midsection of the chassis that the engine and the transmission all attached to and this really becomes the cradle, the kind of crate as you will for the engine that we're going to play about with over the next couple of weeks. So uh, yeah, let's give you a wee run through. Alright so here we are now and we have finally the kind of centre section, the start point for the chassis. So what I'll do here is I'll just run you through the kind of the basic overview and what, what this is all about. All right, so this stage you should be kind of familiar enough with the bulkhead. What we've actually got here is this is bulkhead number one, which is the uh, the pivot point for the front suspension. But we'll get to that in a bit. Um, here is bulkhead number two, which you should be familiar with. That's the first one we did. And then at the rear here, uh, 
throw his shit everywhere. This is bulkhead number three. So bulkhead number three is going to be the kind of mounting point for the four bar link. So we'll have kind of a link coming in. The two bottom links will come in and they'll kind of connect on this cross brace. And then the two top links, which are kind of parallel to one another, will fit into little bungs that we're going to weld into here. But that's a bit further down the line. This stage, one of the major parts of this uh, chassis is actually the, the chassis rails. So you've got your two lower rails here and then you've got kind of an upper rail. So if you look at it side on, you see there's actually a bit of depth to it. And uh, these are kind of all trussed together with these diagonals. So really the idea behind this was to make a very, very stiff uh, kind of chassis rail. You've got the two of these here, uh, should allow for very little twisting. Really the idea with uh, with running kind of such a stiff chassis is that because you're going to be running suspended front and rear axles you want to kind of minimize any twist up in the chassis between them so that really the way the two uh, the two axles interact with one another is kind of all down to the suspension tuning itself and not down to any kind of flex in the chassis that makes it a lot easier for you to tune uh, kind of the handling characteristics of the machine itself but the other thing you have on the chassis on the the main chassis reels the bottom chassis reels here are these four threaded inserts so there's one, two, three, four. And really what they're there for is the engine mount plate. So if you're familiar with lawn tractors, racing mowers, uh, basically anything that's based on like a Murray wide body or something similar, the engine mount plate is actually just a square plate. Um, and this one isn't really much different. So there we have our, our square mount plate. And it just sits right into place. Like that there. Um, and we bolt that in place in the chassis and then set the engine on top. Now at the moment I could actually weld it in place uh, and I may still do it at some stage but um, at this stage it's actually it's useful enough that we can unbolt it, we can remove it, it means we can change the engine mount out if we want to kind of move the whole positions for the engine pickup we can move them around or if we want to put a different engine in it for whatever reason we can change the, the whole pattern as required. So at this stage what we really need to do is put the engine in place and I can show you how the rest of the thing kind of shapes up. All right, so now we've got the engine in place in the chassis. Um, and what you'll notice at this stage about it is, it's pretty close to the front. So it's very close to that number two bulkhead. We're talking about a half an inch. The other thing that should be noticeable enough, um, besides these two bell mouth intakes, is that uh, the front of the engine here is actually now pointing rearwards. Um, so this is the back of the chassis. This is the front. And from the mock-ups that we've had before, these carbs were always pointing forwards. Um, what we had done previously on a different mower, on this one here, was we took the engine and flipped it around. So we took this, the head and the cylinder and pointed them towards the rear of the tractor. And that was really to get the weight off that front axle and kind of bring it more in line with the rest of the, the mass on the tractor to help it handle a bit better. Um, with this one here, we haven't actually done it for that reason. Um, what we did with this one was we kind of worked out that the center of balance for this engine was actually about about here about two inches kind of forwards of this center point here and we worked out that if we rotated the whole engine what we could do is we could keep that uh, that center mass in the same place but if you look underneath right under here you have the uh, the output shaft we actually worked out we could take the output shaft from about here and move it four inches forward and uh, really that was all about getting a bit more space for the clutch so here's the 700 transmission we're going to use and if you look at it side on you'll actually see the input shaft is quite close to the front of the transmission itself so by the time you put that in there and you put like a five inch pulley on here and an eight inch pulley on here really there's not a lot of space between them so by giving that extra four inches there we hopefully should have enough space for a good enough we uh, clutch it took a while to get here but we're finally making some progress all right thanks for watching now if you want to keep up to date with what's going on here because i know these videos take fucking ages um you can check me out at stuntman john on the instagram i'll be putting up little pictures sneak peeks and all that there good stuff 
of the likes of the Thunder Bastard, the Super Bastard, the Little Bastard, uh, a couple of bastards I know, and this fucking hat, which is amazing. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.